Today on The Miraculous Life, we're going to learn about how all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. Welcome to The Miraculous Life. I'm Steve Hannett and I am so excited for you to be able to join us today. I encourage you, grab your Bible, get your coffee, get someplace comfortable, and let's open up the Word of God together. Remember that the Word of God framed everything. It's God's Word of life. It's the Word of faith. It's the source of the release of heaven on the earth. So when we open up the Word of God right now, we're literally opening up the portals of heavenly blessing into your life. And today we're going to be discussing such a beautiful topic about being and living inside of Jesus. I'm going to take us first to Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, and we're going to look in verse 20. And it says this, For all the promises of God in Him are yes, and in Him, amen, to the glory of God through us. This verse reveals something so wonderful, so encouraging, that in Jesus Christ, the promises of God are yes and amen. Do you know what this means? I heard a famous preacher, wonderful message say that in this verse, there is no, no. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. There is no, no. If you've been praying and you've been praying a promise of God, you should know that the answer to that promise inside of Jesus Christ is a yes and an amen to your life. Yes, the answer may be tarrying, it may be delaying. Yes, it may not come right away. Yes, it may take faith and patience, as Hebrews says, to inherit the promises, but know that the Father has already declared that His promises in Jesus Christ are yes and amen. So we're going to study from a place of victory, from a position of it's ours, from a position of that's mine. You know, so many times the devil tries to bother us to get us to doubt, to be able to uh, really clearly understand that if God has done it in Jesus, he has done it. The work of Jesus Christ is finished. So heaven has a resounding yes. The trumpets are blowing. The declarations are being made by all the heavens that in Jesus Christ is jubilee, is freedom, is victory, is peace is joy, is love, is health, is everything that God wants. In Jesus Christ is shalom. Now maybe you've heard of that word before. It is very common for the Jewish people to even greet one another with the term shalom. But the reality is that most people think that that just means peace. And that is simply not true. Peace is only an element of the totality of the meaning of the word shalom. When we say Jehovah Shalom, we're saying God who is our perfect wholeness. Nothing lacking. In Jesus Christ is your shalom. In the Messiah is your perfect wholeness. In Jesus is perfected peace and provision. But here's a difficulty. The Bible knows and declares and reveals that our minds and the way we think, the way we move, the way we see and hear, the way we interpret life through a natural lens is not, frequently, is not in Christ. It's in the world. Our perspectives, 
are not in Christ. They're from the world. And so we have this tension that's happening in us. There's no tension in God. There's no tension in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's a tension in us. Do we think according to him? Are our thoughts found in him? Are our actions found in him? Or could it be, and I believe it is, that we as Christians many times live with the worldly principles, but then on Sunday visit the Bible and discover the principles of Christ. Well, I want to reveal something to you of research that was done. <coughs> and the research was done by multiple people. And uh, it discovered that when human beings are thinking, we think around 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts per day. All right, so that's the average range of what a person is thinking. But here's the amazing thing. Now, that's a lot of thoughts. The amazing thing is they discovered that about 98% of those thoughts that we think are exactly the same as yesterday. Of the 98% thoughts that are repetitive and repeated day after day, literally thought creatures of habit. But of those 98%, 80% are negative. If you take that average of what the world has discovered about the mind of an average person, that would mean that 80% of their thoughts, negative, are not in Christ. That would mean that we're living functionally, experientially, though we may be spiritually seated with Christ in heavenly places as believers, though we may be sanctified and sealed inside spiritually with Christ, our minds are not operating according to Christ. They're operating according to fallen thought patterns. And this creates a tremendous gap that though the promise of God in Jesus Christ is yes and amen, we're thinking thoughts that are out of alignment with God. This causes us to live lives lacking those promises. It's a very sobering reality that we may be spiritually seated with Christ, but on this earth, thinking things that are very far from Christ. Well, we want to be able to close that gap today, and we want to be able to be fully persuaded to be able to get our mind in Christ, our hearts in Christ, our eyes in Christ, our ears in Christ. Romans chapter 12 teaches us in verse 1 and 2, an amazingly famous text. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is an amazing text. It's, it, it's as if heaven is, is unfolding a key for us that when our minds become renewed, we're going to be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? It is the promises of God. It is the reality of the will of God accomplished through Jesus Christ. So we want to change how we think so we may find our thoughts in Jesus. Now, I've got to mention this because I think a lot of people may be very, very, very familiar with things that may seem good and in, in fact are very dangerous. And I'm speaking about the power of positive thinking. It may seem very good, but actually that is not what is in Christ. The power of positive thinking is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. The power of positive thinking may have some similarities to faith, but it is not rooted in the blood sacrifice 
of Jesus Christ. It's not rooted in the cross. It relies on us to be able to control our own mind, think good thoughts, and have good things happen. But the text in Romans says we're to present our bodies to God a living sacrifice. In other words, we're to give God everything because only through Christ can we live in Christ. Let me mention this again. We can only through Christ live in Jesus Christ. You cannot achieve it through willpower. You cannot overcome it by merely controlling your mind. You must tap into the spiritual realm of presenting your body and dying with Christ on the cross. You must put to death your own thoughts. You must put to death how you think so that you may think according to the resurrected body, your born-again creation. Let me, in fact, go through and describe a couple of things here that will help us to capture how important it is to live in Christ. So I'm going to go through a series of verses, and I may be going through them too fast for you to follow with me, but you can always go back and listen and study each of these texts that you may soak in the reality of God's Word. Amen? All right, let's, let, let's go to the text. Romans chapter 3, verse 24. The Bible says that we are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. This verse reveals that we are justified, that it's just as if we never sinned because of the payment of Jesus Christ. Where is that? It's in Jesus. Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Eternal life is in Jesus. The gift of God is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Romans 8, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life is in Christ Jesus. And it's, he set me free from the law of sin and death. Do you want to be free? Do you want to live according to the spirit of life? It's in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 39. The Bible says that the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. The very love of God is in Christ Jesus. You cannot have the love of God outside of Jesus. Romans 12, 5. We are one body in Christ in 1 Corinthians verse, chapter 1, verse 2, he says, those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus. You see, I'm going to continue to go through, through a few verses, but you're going to see repeatedly that we are in Christ and all the promises of God are in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, that God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Praise God. If you are in Christ, if you believe in Christ, you are a new creation in him. Galatians chapter 2. It says there is liberty which we have in Christ Jesus. Freedom is in Christ Jesus. Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by works of the law, but by faith in Christ Jesus. Again, our justification, our being made right with God is in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3, 17. God's covenant is confirmed before God by God in Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, praise God, in the heavenly places in Christ. Let me take a moment on Ephesians 1, 3. Every spiritual blessing is in Christ. Christ Jesus. Everything you need is in 
Christ Jesus. There is nothing that you need, nothing you could crave for, nothing that you could long for that isn't provided through Jesus. So I want to encourage you today that in your Christian life, would you uncover the promises of God that are in Christ? Let's be determined not to look to anything of the world. Let's not go to the power of positive thinking. Let's not go to other man-made philosophies. My goodness, we must come and kneel down before God the Father and exclusively say, God, show me Jesus. Show me Jesus. Show me Jesus. You must make declaration. You could have the whole world and all the principles of it, but show me Jesus. I need Jesus. Now the world may think you're crazy, but you who have faith will be able to enter the portal of blessing, of covenant, of God's provision in Christ Jesus. And your mind and my mind will begin to look at it and will begin to become sensitive to any thought that is outside of Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ even said, Whoever abides in me and my word abides in him, he will ask whatever he desires and it will be done. We knew this in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 15. There is an abiding, there is an intimacy. And I want to tell you today that a lot of people are expecting the promises of God to flow to them. But their minds, their thoughts, their actions, their lifestyle... They're not in Christ. And you may pray and pray and pray. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, it says, Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Today, what are you going through? What are you facing? What are you crying about at night? What pain are you experiencing that maybe nobody sees? Maybe you've even contemplated ending your own life. Maybe you believe there is no hope and that you're not loved. Maybe you think you're too old, too late, and too poor. But every one of those thoughts and feelings are not in Christ. In Christ there is love. In Christ there is hope. In Christ. In Christ is the Father's heartbeat for you. In Christ is your destiny. In Christ is your turnaround. We must turn to Christ. Believe in Christ. And bow unto His words. His teaching. His way. Many people, they, they ask and they say, what do I do? Where do I go? How do I change? God help me. And this is the response in John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. It's not information only that we need. We need the relationship that's so intimate with Jesus. Brothers and sisters, you are the beloved of God. You know, even if you've never talked to Jesus in your whole life, even if you've never gone to church before, but you're hearing my voice now, you have to know that he loves you and he came for you and he's seeking you and he's longing for you, and he's drawing you, and he's calling you to be in him. Many of people know about what they call the story of Noah's Ark. Well, I don't call it a story. I call it his story, his story, history. And in that narrative, 
God told Noah to build an ark. Because humanity had become so depraved, so rooted in evil, that every thought they had was continually evil. And God's judgment came against those things. But Noah, the Bible says in the book of Genesis, found grace in the eyes of God. And God explained to Noah that you need to make an ark. And so for many, many years, scholars disagree on exactly how many, but for many years, Noah and his family labored in the ark. Labored making the ark labored day after day, and there's no rain. People probably mocked them. Noah's preaching, and they probably thought he was crazy. But he listened to the word of God. He listened to the instruction of God. And then one day, God said something to Noah. The work was finished. The rain was about to come. The judgment was about to come. The horrendous, horrible judgment against all of the sin on the earth. It was imminent. It was about to happen, but they never knew it. They just went about doing their own lives. But when God called Noah, when it was time for Noah to be able to enter the ark, the Word of God says that God, the Lord God, said to Noah, come in, come in. God didn't tell Noah and his family, go in. God told Noah, come in. It means that God was telling Noah, you need to come where I am. Come inside my grace. Come inside my provision. Come inside of what I've prepared. Noah and his family heeded the voice of God. And the Bible says that the rains came. For 40 days and 40 nights, it rained. I can imagine the people banging on the outside of the ark. I can imagine them scraping at the wood, pleading to be able to come in, but at that time it was too late. There was a season by which they were able to come, but they were not able to come after the hour, after the judgment had come. They could not get in. Only Noah and his family were inside the provision of God. I want to tell you today that outside the provision of God is pain. Outside the provision of God is horrible, horrendous darkness and torment. And God is calling you to come into the ark. Only this time it's not made of wood. This time it's the Son of Almighty God. His name is Jesus and He's the Messiah. This is the hour that judgment is imminent against sin. And God is calling for each of us to come out of darkness and to come into the provision. And you heard, praise God, you heard what God said, come in. Why? Because every spiritual blessing is in Christ Jesus. And all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. Will you make the shift today? Here's what you need to do. You need to call on that God who sent Jesus. And you need to tell him that you need his help. You need to humble yourself under his mighty hand and you can cry out to him and say, Lord, I know that I am a sinner. I know that I have fallen short. I want to come into you. God has made the way. The body and blood of Jesus were opened up. The body and blood of Jesus were completely torn. His whole body was torn. And the Bible says, come into him. And you do it through faith that on that cross, the sacrifice of Jesus, the blood spilt on that tree, two pieces of wood. God made the way for you to come. 
believe in Jesus. Believe he's the son of God. Believe that he died for you. And your faith will usher you in to glory and to peace and to his love and to shalom, perfect wholeness. Brothers and sisters, our ministry, along with many other ministries on the earth, are seeing the shalom come to many people. Do it today. Call on him. Call on him right now. I ask this in Jesus' name, that you'd be blessed in his mighty power. May God bless you. Hey, God bless. My name is Steve Hannett, and I'm the founder of Every House, the ministry that produces the miraculous life. I'd like today to talk with you about prayerfully becoming a financial partner with our ministry to get the word of God out to the nations. You know, we've got an amazing team that's dedicated to seeing lives change. Many people don't know that when they're becoming a financial partner, that they're literally joining the work with us and literally becoming part of the family to produce fruit in the nations. Now, we understand that your tithes belong to your local church, and we encourage you to be faithful to your local congregation. So we also understand that there are offerings that you can invest in ministries like Every House to help support the work that we're doing. Simply go to everyhousenow.org, click the Give button, and you'll be presented with a series of options of how to partner with us. God bless you, and we thank you in advance for your love. We pray you've been blessed by The Miraculous Life and know the Lord Jesus desires His best in your life. The Miraculous Life is a production of Every House, a missions ministry focused on releasing the power of God, establishing strong churches, and developing sound leaders who advance the kingdom of God. Your love gift to Every House is tax deductible in accordance with the law. We believe your tithes belong to your local church and your donations to our ministry are received as offerings for the advancement of the Great Commission.